guys, hello there. I finally did it. My first cookie video. Woo! I'm so excited. So I kind of like, yeah, was thinking here, what am I gonna do first? There's so many things I like to cook and I couldn't help it other than just going for black beans. Feijão preto. Yes, here we go. So this is an amazing dish that we eat back in Brazil pretty much every day. You know, on Wednesdays we even have feijoada, Saturday too. Um, so this recipe here that I'm gonna share with you is not feijoada. It's just a very basic day-to-day -day bean dish. Now, for you to cook black beans really effectively, you gotta have a pressure cooker. If you don't do it on the pressure cooker, it's gonna take forever. Like beans do tend to do that. So pressure cooker makes the cooking really quick. Uh, check out my links below. I have a couple options of pressure cookers that you might wanna get. I recommend if you ever do get a pressure cooker, get a eight quart, nothing smaller than that. Eight quart would be great. Mine is an eight quart. So I cooked two pounds of black beans and I soaked them in four uh, quarts of water first. Then I dumped that water and go ahead and fill new water, new four quarts of water and bring it to the boiling. Well, watch the video and I will get you through the whole process of how to set the pressure cooker just right so that you don't overcook your beans either. Um, in my case here today, I used the entire pot to do the very saucy type of um, dish that you can pour over rice. And for that, I used very basic ingredients. Today I'm going to show you how to cook black beans with a pressure cooker. I buy black beans in the bulk, so this was a 12 pound bag. So I took out about four cups of beans, put them in the pressure cooker, and that makes more or less two pounds. So I wouldn't cook more than two pounds of beans at once. You need to soak the beans, all right? I like to usually put my, my beans in the pot one day before, and I soaked it with four quarts of water. The black beans nice and soaked, and yes, they start cracking a little bit. The next day, I dump that water, I rinse the beans, put them back in the pot, and then go ahead and fill the pot with another four quarts of water. Nice and full, but not too full. The maximum says up there, so I'm just a little below. Once the soaking process is done and I rinse and I have clean water um, in the pot again, I bring that on the stove top. So we put it back on the stove and I turn off my heat. You will need to salt it already. So for this amount of beans, I go ahead and put one teaspoon of salt. Nice and full. I personally like to use cumin. If you for some reason don't like cumin, it can go well without cumin as well. And leave it um, in high heat until the water boils. I have not closed my pressure cooker yet. Once the water boils, you will notice that the beans, they create a foamy substance on top. I like to scoop that out. It's kind of really good for um, like lessening the collateral effects later. So it, it seriously works. So I like to do that. The pot is already boiling and it is now time to close the pot. So you close it really tight and each pressure cooker can be a little different. So I'm sure you're comfortable with yours. So make sure it's nice okay. and tight. And because it was boiling, my pin already went up right away. That means that the pot is um, sealed and that the pressure will start very soon. It doesn't take long from there that the top of the pressure cooker, that valve, will start hissing. And once that starts hissing, I wait about a minute and from there I lower the heat a little bit. So you don't have to lower the heat lots. So my stove is a gas stove, so the heat gauge is highest is, is 9 and going down from there. So I lower the heat to about 7, more or less. I am usually around the kitchen here checking on this, so I kind of listen. If the hiss is even and constant, then I know that the heat is just right. So it takes about a minute or two, because if suddenly the hiss will kind of go away, then you kind of lower the pressure way too much. And again, I just hear the hiss, and if the hiss stabilizes like that for about three minutes and it doesn't spike or simply disappear, then I know I hit the temperature just right. And depending how fast your boiling was, your hissing will be starting really soon. It sometimes 
doesn't start right away. Mine here picked up the hissing in about a minute after I closed the lid. From there, I let the beans cook for about 20 minutes. I just keep it there and yes, unfortunately, this is not the type of thing that you can just go, leave your house and come back. You need to be home to watch your pressure cooker. And um, if you have the heat controlled, there is no fear here, the pressure cooker is going to be just fine. Now if you keep the heat to its maximum, don't do that because the pressure cooker will build really, really um, lots of pressure and um, the valve might really go crazy and you don't want that to happen. So that's why a little lower heat is enough, but you don't want to lower it too much because then sometimes the pressure disappears too. So it's, it's kind of like a learning curve there. You have to get to know your pressure cooker and your stove and work with it. Once that is done, 20 minutes are over, I turn the heat off. That doesn't mean that the cooking process is over, not at all. Um, the beans are still cooking and that's the cool thing about the pressure cooker because it is cooking without using any gas. Isn't that great? So you wait, I would say about 10 minutes until the pressure inside the pressure cooker diminishes, until it's completely gone, the pin drops and that's when your pot is ready to open again. Once you open the pot, your beans are steaming and they should be um, kind of like falling apart, um, not necessarily um, mushy, so they are cracking a little bit and have somewhat of a resistance to itself still. So I think that that's just the, the perfect feel for, for the cooked beans. So from here, you can grab your beans, separate them in different pots and maybe put them in the freezer and then use a little bit whenever you need. I like to prepare these beans with some seasoning. So I'm going to tell you now how to do the seasoning. Um, it's very basic. Really, all you need is onions, garlic, some choice of, of um, meat, which in this case here is bacon, and Portuguese sausage. For spices, I already used salt, but I might want to use a little bit more, but maybe not because the sausage and the bacon does have salt, so you want to take that into consideration. Some people will also uh, put bay leaves in their beans. In this um, video here, I didn't, I was out. If you do have bay leaves, go ahead and toss in two or three or four. That will definitely add to the flavor. I will also need cilantro. If you don't have cilantro, parsley will do well as well. Uh, cilantro I, is my favorite because it really has such a, a beautiful aroma. It gives like a taste like nothing else on your beans. If you want to use both, that should work too. First thing here, what you do, grab the bacon and the sausage and brown it really nice. Uh, it takes about five minutes for bacon and sausage to be nice and golden. So browning is key. It makes, gives, it enhances the flavor so that all the flavors of the, the, the sausage and the bacon release. And then when it mixes with the, um, the beans, it just blends in like nothing else. It's really nice. After that, you go ahead and bring in the garlic and the onions and let that saute just a little bit more too. I would say about three minutes or so. All right, so two minutes are almost over and the smell of garlic and onion is insanely good. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be great. And then lastly, I bring in the cilantro. Again, as much as you like, wanna put more? Sure. And finally, grab the beans and with a ladle, start pouring them into your pot. So I recommend that you also have a strainer so that in the bottom really you can fish <laughs> those beans out completely. And um, don't worry about all that liquid that is left over. You don't need to throw it out either. Keep it there because beans, as you um, wait a couple hours, they will thicken. So for example, if you make this dish a couple hours ahead of dinner, um, you might notice that later on they are a lot thicker. So then grab some of that liquid that was left over and toss it into the beans. Now right here I decide how much more liquid I need. And there is also this. For example, it's now 1.30 in the afternoon and this will be for dinner. So by then my beans will have thickened a little bit. So there is no problem in putting a little bit more liquid into this right now. I would say two more scoops. I don't like things overly salted so this is the time when I just try it out. I'm sure my family is gonna say where is the salt? 
So because of them, I will just add a tiny little bit of salt. I think this was probably a quarter of a teaspoon. There we go. Once you are done with your beans, they go amazing on rice. Parboiled rice, white rice uh, would do well. I do not recommend jasmine rice or basmati rice. They just have their own particular aroma that, I don't know, with black beans here, it doesn't go 100% to my liking. Another um, green that's really good to have with this is collard greens. So I hope one day to make a video on how to prepare that. And another thing that's also really good is oranges. Just cut some slices of oranges and, oh, it just goes together with, with um, you know, that strong bean flavor and the acidity of the oranges, kind of like one, you know, kind of like a sweet salad. Now, the last golden top that you need to have is uh, farofa de manjoca. This is one amazing little thing. Okay, manjoca is, here in America, they call it um, tapioca or cassava or yuca root. All right, it is a root about this long, this thick, really, really tough skin. And we boil them and eat them just like mashed potatoes. But if you dry them out and make something like a, a cornmeal, out of it, then you come up with farofa. Really good. So you can find this on the descriptions below and get some and just sprinkle it on top of your beans. And there we go. You're gonna have a great time eating an amazing, delicious dish. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope that you are really tempted to cook this dish. And if you like it, please like the video and send me a comment. Subscribe as well. I would love to have you here. I love this channel and I hope that this can be helpful for you to have fun ideas to cook, um, get creative with your workouts, and I'll throw in some fun things for you to do here and there as well. Thank you so much. Take care.